G'day guys, welcome back to the channel and today we will be picking my first AFL Supercoach team for 2023. The picker is open, um, has been for about a day or so, uh, yesterday on Friday, just uh, they released it sort of out of the blue. I think was a few people thought it was coming um, pretty soon, uh, obviously they want to get the BBL up and running but it really is AFL season and I know I just released a couple of BBL videos and I will be doing that uh, probably until... Uh, well, look, I'm going away uh, after Christmas, so I probably won't be around for a week or so, um, or probably a couple of weeks then anyway for any videos, but um, yeah, I did start all right in the BBL, but we are looking at the super coach now, the AFL. That is what we're here for. That is that is the number one game, um, you know, that I've played for years and, and enjoyed the most. Um, you know, it's become more difficult as of recent, you know, last year was, was crazy with the amount of uh, value that there was um, throughout the whole game, really. Um, and you'll see it when we scroll through some plays and just how high priced they are. You know, I've already had a look and sort of built a team, and that's what I'll do do right now, sort of just run through an early team and structure that um, looks not too bad. But obviously, as we know, we can't do too much in December with not knowing rookies and, um, you know, who's going to be playing and, and all that sort of stuff. So I see a lot of preseason left. But, I mean, we just look right now. You can sort of see just on my screen, but, you know, how many... Pricey defenders there are, you know, to have five over 600k is, is quite remarkable. Um, really, you know, pretty much all, almost average 110, you know, three of those guys just shy of it. But, um, you know, Stuart missed a few games and then, you know, you know, a concussion game, you know, he would have uh, hit that marker quite easily. Uh, Doc was pretty much there and Dawson just had a couple of games probably where he, you know, had to uh, play out of position or, or was, you know, he was tagged a couple of times as well. But, unbelievable um, season from the defenders and just really makes it hard to start them all um, so look I've gone right now for a structure where we get two of these guys in and look it's going to be hard to talk me out of the two guys that I started last year uh, in fact and you know two of the things I got super right last year I mean I didn't blow my own trumpet here but I didn't get a hell of a lot wrong but the things I got did get wrong really really burned me in a big way like you know a no Brody no Crips to start those sort of couple of decisions and um, really just like just blew my whole season apart you know the fact I finished 2k with pretty much nailing a lot of things like starting these two guys who went on to be two of the top defenders at, at a bit of a discount um, you know just goes to show how, how competitive it is actually you know really with super coach uh, these days and just how crazy of a season it was Scroll down a bit here, and there's a few guys like Bailey Dale. I don't mind, but but is his role super certain? Uh, same with Gus Brayshaw. Could be, you know, same could be said. Um, is he going to be playing in the midfield or half back? He's been played on the wing at times too. Bit uncertain there. Uh, Houston's always been a solid performer. We're not going with Aaron Hall, just too injury prone. Daniel Rich is getting on. There's a guy like Mason Redmond who had a few blow up games. I think it was about three games over like 140 and a couple of them absolutely monstrous, but just a few poor ones in between and sort of his role isn't super set either in that team. And there's just a few guys back there that, that can sort of take uh, the same ball, so to speak. Uh, and then we go a bit further down. I've just for now got Nick Dacos there who just did me so well. Again, like I'm already looking at my 2022 back line really um, right now with, with these three guys, but um, look, uh, right now, this is the structure I've got. I've got three of these guys, and then I've kind of go straight to sort of a couple of higher price rookies and then sort of just uh, lower price ones. So, whoops, uh, didn't be it's meant to be. Fucking spell correctly. So, uh, sort of take him with West Coast first pick in this draft. Uh, highly touted. Don't know a hell of a lot, but just know that he's pretty likely to get games, um, whether it be like at halfback or on the wing. Um, he's that sort of type. McKenna, obviously in the game back at Brisbane, uh, has returned and I had a few people, I did tweet out and had a few people reply to me saying, you know, he ain't going to even be best 22, so, you know, why are you bothering? But um, I think there is a spot for him in that side. Um, he just provides so much dash uh, off halfback and in that Brisbane team with how attacking they are, I think it could suit, suit him and suit them quite quite well but again remains to be seen um and then i've just i think i just filled it out with like a josh weddle who the hawks took uh chesser who if fit you know should get games as well for west coast and then look i actually just pop in anyone here maybe it's just a 123k to sort of um just ensure you're sort of spending up somewhat um who it is it doesn't really matter will gould you know we'll go for now is that man ever going to get a game who knows in the midfield um Again, Roy Laird, 700k. Clary, pretty much the same. Neil's, Neil's high price and, and Took as well. All the sort of 120 plus guys. Uh, there's Mills there. Bonts, 
and a bit of a value, you know, in a sense, you know, he's still very highly priced, but I think he can be a 120 guy as well. Same said, uh, can be said about McRae. There's just a lot of really top-end midfielders at the moment, and, and, and thus their prices are really, really high, and it's hard to really find any value guys anymore. Um, so I think for now, I'm going to go with a Took. Could be a clarity if I sort of have enough for him. I think I chose Bont at this current time, um, sort of with Dunks leaving. I think he's just going to be relied upon in the midfield a lot more, and, and hopefully, and rightly so, as he should be, really. Um, you know, they sort of had to plug holes up forwards at times, but they're, they've got plenty of options up forward now. Um, so I think uh, Bok mid-time, a fully fit Bont will be uh, will go very well. A bit further down, you know, so, oh, so many 600k guys, and I think Parrish just above 600k entices me a bit, just... Um, you know, just finds a footy with ease. You know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna punish you, but he's sort of death by a thousand cuts. And I think in that Essendon team, he's just obviously the clear number one guy. And then Jack Steele is a bit of a value as well, who is also the clear number one guy at St Kilda. Um, does it all as we know. And uh, look, he did not burn me, but I did get him in last year, and he, he did his shoulder sort of a couple of weeks later. But fully fit. Um, you know, he he's again a one twenty uh, plus player. Um. You know, at his best, obviously, he's priced below that, so he's a little bit of a value as well. And then I think I filled it out with probably one of the locks who have been quite a lot of teams is Jacob Hopper um, getting across from the Giants to Richmond at 330K. He's going to start in our midfield. And look, uh, I don't think he's going to go absolutely nuts, but I think he's going to make enough money to be a worthy selection in our teams. Uh, then I've sort of, I think I've just gone straight down to Ashcroft, obviously, father son to Brisbane. Um, you know, priced a little bit as as you are when you're a number one pick, but um, I think he's going to find a spot in that team pretty quickly. And then Will Phillips, who again, obviously not totally sure if he's going to be got to be you know one fit and firing, but he did have a glandular fever and a bit of big sickness sort of the last year, and and he is uh, quite cheap, you know, because of that. Uh, and then I think I just went like this: Finn McRae is there at one twenty three k, whether he's best twenty two or not, who knows. Um, look, the rest doesn't really matter. There's a few, obviously, other draftees like your, your Cam McKenzie, your Philippou, your, your Elijah uh, Tardis at, at Essendon as well. But, you know, obviously, we'll see if those guys get games and then, obviously, we'll have to pay up a little bit more um, if we if we need to. Uh, Oscar Baker is one I did see a few Dogs fans think who might get a game for them coming across uh, from Melbourne. But, yeah, who knows there? Rux. Now, Rux is going to be very... Um, a very tough and big talking point for uh, season 2023 because, uh, number one, you just look down the bottom there, you see Grundy in a Melbourne with a Melbourne icon and it still doesn't look right, but him and obviously gone in the same team, how that's going to work. Wits at 600K after his sort of uh, amazing season out of the blue. Um, English, who you know many of us got in and, and did disappoint in the second half, uh, same could be said about Big Shrek, who um, still, you know, turned out a decent season in the end, but one or two is probably not quite going to cut it. But who knows with the rucks uh, at the moment? You know, Rob there at one hundred and one, and then it's sort of, you know, your Nick Nat, who did, obviously didn't play much of the year. Blitzarves there, Nank, who actually had a decent season himself, and could be an option at five thirty now with you know Richmond having a, a bit of a midfield. But again, I probably wouldn't go there. And then Grundy down there at five twelve, you know. It's hard. I don't know if I'm going to go there because of what the setup is, but he could be sort of the first ruck with Gorn floating, you know, whether that's in defence as an interceptor or sort of playing more forward. Who knows? Rowan's there as well, but with Max King going down, it's hard to know how much forward time he's going to uh, have to play. Then there's DC, who was awesome for me last year, one of the great trade-ins that sort of helped me uh, stay with the pack um, as well. And, and with Grundy obviously going, he might be, you know, relied upon to, to do the sole rucking, which which could prove to be an option. Um, and then you sort of scroll further down. There's sort of Lloyd Meek. Some people have looked at Scott Lysette, Sam Draper. None of those really entice me. So for now, I've got English and I've got Darcy. Um, and it was sort of what I was almost going to start last year and obviously missed out with English, who, who did go quite well very early on. Um and sort of with Shrek, obviously, having a couple of niggles here and there. But look, for now, I just think that's the go. Again, it's going to lead a lot of research uh, to be done and, and looked at over the preseason. And I think I'll just go with the cheapest ruck forward for now. And sort of leaves forward line where I have actually got a few primos here. I've, I think I've got four, sort of a four structure. Um, and I think a lot of them pick themselves with, with Dunks. Obviously, going to Brisbane is going to play a lot more mid-time than he sort of ever has. 
uh, at the Dogs. Uh, Evan Coggs looks like a decent option. He's retained his forward status. Dylan, uh, you know, Butters, Dylan Moore I like as well. Um, you know, with a lot of these guys and good options, it's going to sort of render like a Heaney pretty useless. Um, you know, Hawkins, those sort of guys, just going to not be totally um, or, or really good options with all these this massive amount of good, good options in the forward line. You know, Rosie, I'm going to... Having my team at this point in time finished off the, the season really well, playing in the midfield, um, sort of the second half. And then Tim Tarano, again, going to be in a lot of teams. Um, he's going to frustrate a few, and, and I think a lot of us know that, who, who've owned him in the past, watched him, you know, as his career's gone on. He's, he's sort of that frustrating player with his efficiency, but he is going to find the ball a lot, and he's going to play a lot in the Tigers midfield. That's why he left the club. Uh, he wanted to... Um, I mean, in an interview, in it, sorry, in an interview I saw, he didn't. He said he didn't really want to leave the Giants, or or was did find it hard to leave all his mates there. But it was for, um, you know, his career decision. Wanted to play. You know, he's been in the league six, seven years. He wants to play the rest of his career in the midfield and and for a big club, and, and that's what he's going to do. He is going to annoy us, um, no doubt, um, with some of his games. But um, that's just the nature of it. Uh, and how he plays, and then I think I went with Big DC. So talked about him before. It could be an option if we have two confident rucks, or sorry, two rucks we're confident in to start and do well. DC could be that um, option. And look, if he is an option himself, you could start him in the ruck line, obviously as well. Um, but I don't mind him as sort of that, um, you know, that cover. You know, you're gonna have to have, to have cover, especially <laughs> with the two guys I picked, English and Darcy, blokes who both missed a couple of games here and there in 2022. Having DC as sort of that cover, um, you know, seems like a good option. But again. Um, who knows, even if I'll go with that that uh, ruck line. And then uh, a guy who will be in a hell of a lot of teams is Toby McLean. Um, coming back, did play a bit of midfield in the last couple of games. Uh, you know, and in, in a final when he when he came back into the team, I think I went with Joe Richards again. Rest of the rookies aren't too important, maybe. Maybe a Van Ruin I saw, you know, he could get games for... For Melbourne or one of the Davy boys as well, for, for the Bombers, who knows. But that just fits with 5K left over. Um, so right now, it's sort of a sort of a 3-4-2-4 three, three, four, four sort of set up with sort of a mid-pricer in Hopper and then sort of a couple of higher-priced uh, rookies in sort of your, your Jimby, McKenna, Ashcroft, McLean, those sort of guys. And we'll obviously see in the preseason how many of those become viable. But um, look, it's back. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of content Um me and the other boys, George, JD, um, probably a podcast tomorrow as well. Um, just sort of the first thoughts and, and sort of an outlook on content and some feedback um, as well. Um, yeah, join the Discord. That, that stuff's always going to be uh, popping off in there. And then, yeah, get back into it in January. Big, big few or couple of months for the preseason. So uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. A uh, few, any surprises, you know, with some pricing. I know Cunnington... A lot of people we're looking at. There's a five. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about on the podcast as well. You know, Cunnington's four nineteen. Kind of makes him a bit useless. Five three thirteen. I've seen a few. Still interested in him. You know, a couple of those photos always floating around of five and his biceps at this time of year. But that obviously doesn't um, equate to anything on the field. But um, yeah, let me know how you sort of uh, see the pricing and, and and the season playing out with a couple of. Um, you know, with the structures and whatnot. But again, it obviously is very, very early for, for any of that to be set in stone. But um, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.